Amen. Thank you, Brother Casey. I want to thank Brother Mike A. and Brother John Stroop for extending the invitation to me to come and speak to you tonight. I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I'm honored uh, to be uh, asked to speak, to bring God's word before us tonight. As we start tonight, uh, what's, what's the soundtrack of your life? You got a theme song? That song that, man, if you could put it on your alarm clock, be the first thing you hear when you wake up, just gets you juiced up, fired up for the day. Anybody got a song like that? I don't know what, what your song might be that just, it gets it, gets it does, the, does the job for you. I don't know. We, I work with high school students, my wife and I, and today, I mean, it's just a lot of pan, pop candy, cotton candy, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift junk. Like, oh, come on. That doesn't get you fired up. I'm talking about some, some stuff with some meat, some stuff with some, some earth, you know, something like the guitar solo in Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Like, man, or something like uh, Thriller. By the king of pop, you know, you just want to start moonwalking or something. How about Eye of the Tiger from the Rocky movie by Survivor, right? Don't Stop Believing by Journey. One of my personal favorites, In the Air Tonight by Mr. Phil Collins. That'll get you juiced up right there, right? Rocky theme song, Gonna Fly Now. You're like, yeah, I'm ready to, I'm ready to take on the world. What's the soundtrack of your life? What's your theme song tonight? I want to share a story with you about a guy named John that grew up in England, across the pond there, and the story of his song, his life song, the song that he, he sang. John was born in London, England in 1725. His mother died when he was just seven years old, raised in a single-parent home, being raised by his father who brought him up on the sea, out on the ocean as he worked as the captain of a ship. And he had been a sailor as a young man, but an unruly and insubordinate young man. Does that describe anybody here tonight? One captain called John the most profane man he had ever met. And that was not an easy title to come by, especially among sailors. But John was pressed into the Royal Navy. He eventually deserted the Navy and then got into the slave trade. He ended up a captain of a, of a ship that carried slaves between Europe the sugar plantations of the West Indies, and Africa's slave coast. In 1748, John had a spiritual conversion on a journey back to England. He almost drowned in a terrible storm, but he prayed to God in the midst of that storm, and the ship did not sink. But it wasn't the first time John found religion, but it was the first time that it stuck. Even so, his conversion was gradual, and he stayed in the slave trade for, more, for several more years. After that, he stopped gambling. He gave up drinking. He married his girlfriend, whom he'd loved for many years. John was later ordained as a minister. He gave up the slave trade entirely. And later in his life, he became an outspoken abolitionist, trying to ab abolish slavery altogether. In his best-selling pamphlet, Thoughts Upon the Slave Trade, in 1788, he described the awful conditions of the slave ships that he had cap captained. And John Newton had also jotted down some of the most famous words in that same attic where he wrote those sermons. And those words go like this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. John Newton, you're on a journey tonight. You're here. You're, you're on a journey. Some of you, you're on a journey to freedom, a freedom from addiction. Some of us, a journey to a new job. You lost your job, a new life. Maybe something you, you would consider the good life. I just need to make an income. I just need to get my own apartment. I just need to get my own place. Some of you, a, new, a journey of a new start. Turning over a new leaf. It's fall. The leaves are falling. We're turning over a new leaf. The journey, it's a struggle. Have you noticed? Life is tough, right? It's good, bad, and ugly. And oftentimes within 30 seconds of each other, good, bad, and ugly. We're aware of this. My question, though, tonight for you, what, what's your life song? What's the song of life for you? What song are you singing? What song do we each 
individually need to take for our lives? What needs to be the theme song of our life? What's the song of life we need to be singing? For John Newton, it was amazing grace. The amazing grace, saving grace of Jesus Christ. The song I want to commend to you, recommend to you that you and I could all be singing as we walk out of this building after hearing the word of God preached tonight. The song, some described like this. It has charmed more griefs to rest than all the philosophy of the world. It has sent back to the dungeon more felon thoughts, more black doubts, more thieving sorrows than there are sands on the seashore. It has comforted the noble host of the poor. It has sung courage to the army of the disappointed. It has poured balm and comfort into the heart of the sick, of captives in dungeons, of widows in their griefs, of orphans in their loneliness. Dying soldiers have died easier as it was read to them. Grim hospitals have been illuminated. It has visited the prisoner and broken his chains and like Peter's angel, led him forth in imagination and sung him back to his home again. What song is that? It is the 23rd Psalm in the book of Psalms. Will you stand with me as we read Psalm 23 together? If you're able, please stand. Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray together tonight. Most Holy Father, Lord, you are the author of this psalm. You are the writer. Lord, you have given, us, given this as truth and life for our souls tonight. God, I pray by your word you would work mightily in this place, in this room, Lord, as other ministries, as children uh, and our teens are, are ministered to as well, that your word would shine brightly, that Jesus would be made much of tonight. Lord, I also want to pray for my brother Casey as he comes in just a few minutes from now to open your word again, to hear the truth of it, to meet personally with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. John Newton realized something that we all need to realize or be reminded of tonight. The journey is long and hard. There's no quitters. How will my life go? How is your life going? How will it all turn out? How will your life turn out? What will happen to you? How do we know for certain tonight that grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home? How do we know that? What standing we, do we have to believe that? Where are you at on your journey? How are you making it? Tonight, I want to point you to hope with a capital H. I got one of those light blue freeway shirts that say hope on them. If you have one of those. I want to strengthen your faith for the journey. You might be here tonight feeling pretty hopeless. Not a lot of hope in your world. Pretty hopeless in your circumstances. You might have lost your way, lost your faith. Some of you are, were just dying for Saturday night to come freeway. Let's have some dinner. Let's, let's feast on the word of God. I want to challenge you. I want to comfort you. I want to give you comfort to those of you who are afflicted. And I want God's word to afflict those of us tonight that are comfortable. I want the word to move us to return as 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 16 says, to return to the shepherd of your souls. So three truths from the song of life. We could appropriately title this psalm of David, the, the Lord, the shepherd of his people, the song of life. The title of my message tonight, the song of life. Here are three truths from the song of life. Number one, the first truth is we have a strong shepherd, our strong shepherd. Check out the characteristics of our companion and our leader. Verse one, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd. There's a possessiveness here. I have a three-year-old daughter. Everything is mine. 
that's mine. I'm not going to share that. That's mine. It's personal. It belongs to me. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd tonight? Can you say that from your heart tonight? Jesus said this in John 10, verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep, verse 16, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Search your heart tonight. Search your heart tonight. Is he your shepherd? Jesus went on to say, John 10, verse 26, but but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. The Lord is my shepherd. I am his sheep. He is my shepherd. I hear his voice. I follow him. He is mine, and I am his. One commentator says this, It's remarkable that the Lord would call himself our shepherd. In Israel, as in other ancient societies, a shepherd's work was considered the lowest of works. If a family needed a shepherd, it fell on the young one of the family, like David, the youngest of his brothers, out tending the sheep. That's the one who got this unpleasant assignment. Jehovah has chosen to be our shepherd. David says the great God of the universe has stooped to take just such care of you and me. He is our shepherd. He was a real and personal shepherd for David. Tonight, is he a real and personal shepherd for you? Are you following him? Is he right here with you? Or for some of us, does he still feel kind of out there? Jesus is kind of out there, not right here. Spurgeon says this, The Lord is my shepherd. If he be a shepherd to no one else, he is a shepherd to me. He cares for me. He watches over me. He preserves me. The Lord is my shepherd. Do you see yourself tonight? Do we see ourselves tonight as wandering lost sheep? Until we see ourselves, until you see yourself as a lost sheep, you will never set your eyes and see the loving shepherd. See yourself as a lost sheep. That's what the Bible calls us. That's what we are called. That's who we are, wandering from the fold of God. But our shepherd doesn't let us wander for very long. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's a providing shepherd. Not only is he a personal shepherd, he's a providing shepherd. He is generous. David says, I have no lack. I have everything I need. Why? Because he makes me lie down in green pastures. What more do sheep want than green, luscious grass to eat? A green pasture. He, I have no need because he leads me in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He takes care of my every need. Philip Keller, who's in his book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, writes that sheep do not lie down easily. If you've ever spent any time with sheep. And sheep will not lie down unless four conditions are met. Because they are timid, they will not lie down if they're afraid. Because they are social animals, they will not lie down if there's friction among the sheep. If flies or parasites trouble them, they will not lie down. And finally, if sheep are anxious about food or hungry, they will not lie down. Rest comes because the shepherd has dealt with fear, friction, flies, and famine. I have no need. I shall not want. There's no want I can have because the Lord is my shepherd. He's my providing shepherd. He is my protecting shepherd. Look at verse 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's a leading shepherd. He willingly walks with us. Our God is not just this far off distant deity that we pay homage to, that we bow before and try to please. He's with us. He is our Emmanuel. He is our God with us. He is our shepherd. He leads us in paths of righteousness. He's leading us. He's looking. He's looking around. He's looking for us, for his 
name's sake. What kind of shepherd loses track of his sheep? That's your whole job, dude. You had one job. Watch the sheep. Care for the sheep. This is who Jesus, our Savior, is, a good shepherd. He keeps us as his own because we are his sheep. He is our shepherd. This is our strong shepherd. He's alert. Look at verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Did you sing that truth tonight? Though darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Darkness is part of life. This is a journey. This is a difficult journey. For some of us, it's a devastating journey. There is the shadow of death. We have a strong shepherd, yes, but there is still number two tonight, second truth, the shadow of death we find ourselves or have found ourselves in at one time or another. But the shepherd is with us in the shadows. The shepherd has his rod to ward off any predators. The shepherd has his staff to bring us back, to pull us back from danger and from harm. But the difficulties of the journey. Tonight, search your heart. Do you have the good shepherd in your valley of the shadow? Look at verse 4 again. We see a kind of a, a transition here. David goes from saying he to saying you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There's a shift in person. David first is talking about the strong shepherd. Now he gets personal and says, you, from the third person, he and his, and he does this and he does that, to the second person. I'm talking to you now, Lord. This is a prayer to you, you and your. Who do you talk to in your troubles? I'm sure for a lot of us, there's kind of self-talk. Right? I mean, we can't go a day without kind of maybe that internal dialogue in our head. You know, they, they say you're allowed to talk to yourself, but when you start answering yourself, that's when it becomes a problem. But who do you talk to in your troubles? Right? The conversation between you and you. Hold on, I'm having a conversation here with me, myself, and I. Who are you talking to? But here we learn who to talk to in our troubles. Here we learn who to talk to in our trials and tribulations of life. We talk to our strong shepherd in the shadow of death. He is with us. We pray that a lot. God, I pray that you'd be with them. David doesn't have to pray that. I know you are with me. You're the God who, who inhabits all of the universe, all of eternity, all of time and space. You're with me. The highest heaven cannot contain you, God. You are with me. You are my strong shepherd. Who's with you tonight? Who's with you through cancer? Who's with you through job loss? Who walks with you when you leave this place tonight, perhaps alone? No family, no spouse, no husband, no wife, no boyfriend, no girlfriend to go home to, no place of home of which you, you call home for you. Who's with you tonight? Is Christ with you? Tonight, I want to challenge you, understand Christ, the good shepherd, the strong shepherd, is with us. He's with you. Is he your shepherd tonight? Are you just playing games? Is this your 13th freeway and you still haven't got on board and, and trusted Christ and are following his word, following his scripture, surrendering your life to him, thinking there's some way out of whatever pit or trap you're held into other than Jesus. Newsflash, we're here for Jesus. That's the only reason we get together tonight to gather to eat food. He's the food. He's the feast. Find him here tonight. Surrender to the good shepherd. Surrender in the shadow of death to the strong shepherd. If you flip over to Psalm 22, there's some, some familiar words. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from helping me? Maybe that's how a lot of us feel tonight. Let me put some things, something in perspective for you. The sufferer, the person saying that is Psalm 22. The sufferer of Psalm 22 is the strong shepherd of Psalm 23. The shepherd walked that path alone. That path that had no green pastures, Jesus walked for you and for me. The path that had no still waters, but instead the fury and wrath of Almighty God against your sin, against my sin, Jesus walked alone. Jesus walked alone in order to forever walk with us. He was forsaken that you and I might never be forsaken. That's why he said from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Now he is our ever-present help in time of need. We go on to see the valley of this deep darkness. All of us live under the shadow of death. The death rate, the death toll is still 100%. Everybody dies. Everyone's going to die. Every person experiences hardships. You might not see it. The TV, the internet's not going to show you that, those things. Social media, right, that's all, that's all it is. It's just humble brag on everything good we got going on. But what happens the moment those things are posted? What's life really got to offer you? Storms, darkness, hardships. All of us face many evils, and death is coming. Death is coming. Are you ready to face death? What song are you singing? What song will you be singing when death knocks at your door? The strong shepherd, the shadow of death. Thirdly, tonight, the safety of home. Look at verse 5 and verse 6 of Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The safety of home. There's an attraction of our arrival. There's an attraction that we are arriving home. And here a scene is set for us. Get this in your, in your mind as you see it there, verse 5 and 6. There's a, there's a scene. We're accommodated. We're being attended to. We're being served. We have a table spread before us to eat. There's a place for us to stay. We're welcomed in. We're guests at the table. We're shown favor. And we have more than enough. Here's what David says about his host. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Some of you all came in tonight and had a plate. And that's great. But here, there's a table. Like, you get the whole table. Like, pull up a chair. Come forth to the table. Not just a plate. A table is prepared for you. And what do you bring to the table? What do I bring to the table? What do any of us bring to the table before Almighty God? absolutely nothing. Shane and Shane, Christian music artists, have an album called Bring Your Nothing. I love it. Bring your nothing. What can we bring? What can a sheep bring to his shepherd? Nothing. What can you bring before Almighty God, before Christ Jesus tonight? Nothing. So bring your nothing. Bring your nothing. David doesn't say, here's what I bring to you, God. No. He says, here's what you've prepared for me. There's a personal, uh, again, uh, a possessiveness here. This is for me. You've prepared. You've taken the time to prepare a table. You've taken the time to prepare a table for me. You've welcomed me. You want me. You're after me tonight. You prepare a table for me. He prepares a table for us. He puts oil on our head. He says, you anoint my head with oil in the east. This was a sign of respect and honor to someone. To wash the feet of a guest, to anoint their head with oil or fragrant perfume. This is exactly what's done to Christ in Luke 7. He's anointed. It's the oil of Almighty God on our head. He puts oil on our head. He puts a cup in our hand. My cup runs over. As if to say, welcome to the party, right? Here's something to drink. There's an abundance for you here. There's a table prepared for you. And of course, David can say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is his home. He is the host. Your, your, your shepherd's name is goodness and mercy. The strong shepherd has a name. His name is goodness. His name is mercy. And if he's with you and you're at the table with him, the table he's prepared for you in the presence of your enemies, then all of goodness and all of mercy is yours. All the mercy and goodness of God will follow you all of your life if this is the song you're singing. If this is the song you're singing. But what does life look at like without the Lord is my shepherd? What does the journey of life look like without a strong shepherd, without a guide, without an overseer of the soul? It's what's called the anti psalm the song of death david pallison writes this without a good shepherd we script our lives to the opposite of psalm 23 to an anti-psalm of foolish hopes you've been there before foolish hope life is still a journey and we still head toward a destination the difficulties and threats along the way are identical but everything else is different Anti-Psalms build a life journey on the premise that the Lord is not present and active. Maybe you believe that tonight. So what remains when we remove the Lord's presence from our life, <laughs> some of us tonight are very aware of this, when we remove the Lord, when we stiff arm the Lord, which is interesting because in the New Testament it says God resists the proud. So if you're proud and you're going to resist God, you're going to stiff arm God, then like the Heisman Trophy, God's going to stiff arm you. He's against you, but he gives grace to the humble. When we remove God's presence from our life, the anti-psalm says this, I can take care of myself. I don't need any help from anyone or anything. Ladies, I don't need a man. I can handle it my, on my own. Right, I'm basically a good person. I mean, come on, I'm not, I'm not Craig Wood. I didn't murder that precious Haley Owens. <laughs> At least I didn't kill anybody. Right? I, I'm a good person. I can pursue and achieve my goals. Oh, I can shake these chains. How many, how, yeah, I can quit whenever I want to. God speaking to anybody tonight? And when you follow those anti-psalms all the way through, you come to a dead end in the valley of the shadow of death. You come to, I am alone. No one looks out for me or looks after me. I have no strong shepherd. I am empty. I'm needy. I'm restless. I'm unsafe. I have no protector in the valley of the shadow of death. And in the end, I lose every good thing I ever had. And death is my shepherd. That's the end of the anti-psalm. That's the end of a life that removes the Lord's presence out of life. Removes Christ Jesus out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your life, out of your family, out of your job, out of what you do with your money. That's what we're left with. But with the Lord Jesus, with the good shepherd, with the strong shepherd of his sheep, death is just that a shadow a shadow Charles Spurgeon says nobody is afraid of a shadow for a shadow cannot stop a, path, a man's pathway even for a moment the shadow of a dog cannot bite the shadow of a sword cannot kill the shadow of death cannot destroy us so fit, which faith will it be tonight for you Every person experiences hardships on the journey. All of us live under the shadow of death. All of us face many evils. Live any one of the anti-psalms and the end is your loss. But live Psalm 23, the song of life, and you will find that you will awaken one day and say with joy, I'm home. I'm home. Friends, tonight, Jesus is how we make it home. Jesus is the song of life. 
that the soundtrack of your life? Is he the theme song of your life? Is he the theme song, the, the song that every morning you arise and awaken to? Jesus. Jesus. He is life. Sing his song of life. He gave his life and conquered death so you could sing his song of life. Sing his song. I don't care if you're a good singer or not. Sing the song loud and proud. Maybe tonight you're a Christian. But this isn't the song you're sing, singing tonight. This isn't the song you definitely did not wake up singing when you awoke out of bed, awoke, rubbed the sleep from your eyes. Then come back tonight. Come back, return to your shepherd. Repent from your straying away. Confess to the Lord Jesus where you've been, even though he already knows, and ask for his forgiveness and continue in faith to hear your strong shepherd. Continue in faith to listen to his voice. My sheep, hear my voice. Hear his voice again tonight. Hear his word, hear his instruction. And maybe tonight the Spirit of God has convicted you. Maybe you understand it truthfully in your heart. Your life is the anti-psalm. Your life is the life removed from God's presence. You have no part in the family of God. The Bible talks about sheep and goats. Well, you're a goat. You're not part of the flock in the pen of God. You're not a sheep among his fold. The Bible tells us to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. We will be saved. And in that, after that, continue to walk in that salvation. Continue to be guided by the good shepherd of your soul. It's only then you will find yourself singing the same song Singing the same lyrics that David sang, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in the end for you, you will make it home. Dear friends tonight, sing the song of life. Let me pray for us. Father God, we love you. We thank you for Christ Jesus. We thank you for this song, this psalm in the Old Testament of your holy word. Lord, what comfort it has brought us in our afflictions. What restoring power it has when we simply understand we're sheep, you're the good, strong shepherd, we need you. And you are standing here with open arms ready to receive us back into the fold. God, I'm afraid tonight there's individuals in this room that have heard the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ, that life is offered to them and they will walk away. They will plug up their ears, they will plug up their heart to your word. God, I pray by your spirit you would convict, you would work in hearts. Lord, you continue to speak and they would hear you and receive you and repent from all sin and find forgiveness, find freedom from the strong shepherd. Lord, we know you're with us through the shadow of death. We know we have safety in your home as you prepare that table for us, as you prepare a place for us, and one day call us to be with you forever. Lord, we look to that. We sing that song. We sing that song of life. For you are most worthy. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice. Thank you for allowing him to be our strong shepherd. Thank you for allowing him to be our song of life. It's in his beautiful name that we pray. Amen.